a team of galactic super beings, calling themselves the Hyper Clan, arrived on Earth, making a showy spectacle at the National Mall, claiming to be galactic saviors. The Hyper Clan told the tale of how their home planet suffered great ecological destruction and pledged to prevent the same fate on other worlds, including Earth. The general populace of Earth immediately ingratiated themselves to the Hyper Clan, seeing them as heroes ready to heal the world. Despite their claims, Earth's superheroes were skeptical, suspicious of the Hyper Clan's grand gestures and offers of help. To demonstrate their commitment to healing Earth, the Hyper Clan used their powers to turn the barren Sahara Desert into a thriving Eden. Superman expressed concerns over the Sahara's transformation, warning that such drastic changes could have unknown geological or social consequences. Despite Superman's valid warnings, many believed he was simply envious of the Hyper Clan, accusing him of sour grapes for their seemingly heroic acts. Expanding their reach, the Hyper Clan began enforcing the law, but instead of incarcerating criminals, they executed them, gaining widespread public approval. The Justice League began to suspect that the Hyper Clan's intentions were not as altruistic as they seemed, linking them to the recent attack on their satellite. The Hyper Clan ambushed the Justice League aboard their satellite, tearing through the structure. The escape pods were useless, leaving the team trapped. Metamorpho encased the entire team and jettisoned them to safety, moments before the satellite exploded. The League survived, but Metamorpho was rendered inert, possibly dead. After the attack, Protex led the Hyper Clan in constructing Xion Zor, a watchtower in the icy plains of Antarctica, cementing their presence on Earth. The Hyper Clan maintained their foothold on Earth, constructing watchtower citadels around the world to establish dominance. Earth's most powerful heroes regrouped at the League's secret sanctuary in Rhode Island to discuss the Hyper Clan's growing threat. A WGBS news report praised Protex and the Hyper Clan for their actions, further ingratiating them with the public and isolating the Justice League. Superman voiced his concerns about the Hyper Clan's extreme measures, especially their execution of criminals, but the public continued to support them. Wonder Woman cautioned the team, reminding them that the Hyper Clan's coordinated actions suggested a far more dangerous agenda. Batman worked silently, analyzing the attack on their satellite, piecing together the evidence of the Hyper Clan's involvement. After his analysis, Batman confirmed the League's worst fears. The Hyper Clan was the same group that attacked their previous satellite headquarters. The League prepared themselves for the inevitable battle, understanding that the Hyper Clan was not simply a benevolent force, but a threat to Earth. Batman laid out his plan to confront the Hyper Clan, detailing strategies that could exploit the weaknesses in their powers. Each hero steeled themselves for the coming war, knowing the fight against the Hyper Clan could be their toughest challenge yet. Batman rejoined the team, bringing crucial intel about the Hyper Clan's movements and issuing a grave warning about their full potential. Entering the room, Batman gave his final command to the League, prepare for war. The Hyper Clan continues to construct watchtower sanctuaries across the globe. News crews flock to the scenes, astounded by the grandeur of each citadel. 
The JLA determined that the Hyper Clan are using some sort of mind control transmitters to broadcast anti-JLA hysteria among the masses. Green Lantern tries to locate their transmitters with his ring, but cannot find anything. The Martian Manhunter presumes that their watchtower bases are the key to stopping them, and splits the team into pairs to take down each watchtower. Wonder Woman flies off to find Aquaman and they end up facing the Hyper Clan shapeshifter, Fluxus. His teammate Tronix shows up to lend him a hand. Tronix projects twin energy rays from her eyes and takes Wonder Woman down. Green Lantern, meanwhile, reluctantly teams up with the Flash. Flash isn't thrilled about working with this rookie Green Lantern. They go to the desert and face off against Armek, Zenturian, and Zoom. Above the Earth, Martian Manhunter meets with HyperClan leader, Protex. Protex tries to convince the Manhunter that the people of Earth fear him and that he should join the HyperClan. Elsewhere, Superman and Batman encounter Amortal and Primade. Primade keeps Batman distracted while Amortal tears through the Bat plane. The ruins of the plane crash into the ground and Batman is nowhere to be found. Superman defeats Primade, but Protex shows up with a handful of kryptonite. Weakened by the radiation, Superman collapses. The Hyper Clan brings the defeated leaguers to Zon Zor. Batman did not perish in the Bat Plane as the Hyper Clan believes. In fact, he counted on the Hyper Clan's arrogance and willingness to dismiss him to infiltrate their citadel at Zon Zor. Having analyzed their powers, Batman now knows the true secret behind the Hyper Clan's abilities. Elsewhere, the Flash continues to fight up against the villainous super speedster Zoom. They zip around from China to South Dakota, but Flash taps into the power of the Speed Force to edge him out. Pulling infinite mass from the field, he decks Zoom, knocking him clear across the country. Elsewhere, Green Lantern deals with the armored Armek. Armek believes that Kyle's Green Lantern ring is vulnerable to the color yellow like other rings. Kyle's ring has no such restriction, however, and he demonstrates this by creating a manga-inspired power armor to pummel Armek into the ground. Having polished off Zoom, the Flash races to help out Green Lantern. Although Armek is down, they now have to deal with the shield-slinging Zenturian. Zenturian hurls his discus shield at the heroes, but the Flash catches it, sending it right back to him. The discus strikes Zenturian in the jaw, momentarily stunning him. Flash and Green Lantern race to Zon Zor, where they discover that the rest of the League has been taken captive. Batman and the Martian Manhunter, however, are nowhere to be found. Analyzing the Hyper Clan's monitor chambers, they learn that an advanced invasion fleet is perched just outside of Earth's atmosphere, but they are hidden in a pocket of hyperspace. This is how they were able to avoid satellite detection and ambush the previous Justice League at their headquarters. The Hyper Clan soon finds out where the Flash and Green Lantern are and takes them out. All of the captured League members are placed inside of a Martian device known as the Flower of Wrath. Hyper Clan member Amortal senses that something is amiss and goes off to investigate. In the lower levels of the Citadel, he encounters Batman. When Amortal fails to report back to Protex, he sends the other Hyper Clan members to find him. 
They locate Batman and surround him, but Batman knows the truth about the invaders now. They are actually Martians. Although they are incredibly powerful, they also have a great weakness, fire. Having already doused the room in gasoline, Batman strikes a match and sets the entire chamber alight. When Protex learns that a simple human has defeated his hyper-clan, he flies into a rage. He transmits a signal to the Martian Armada tucked away in hyperspace, ordering them to begin their invasion of Earth. Although greatly weakened, Superman begins to deduce that the Hyper-Clan members are actually Martians. As such, he determines that the green kryptonite that has been crippling him is just a psychic projection with psychosomatic consequences. Breaking through the mental programming, Superman regains his strength and bursts free of his restraints. While Superman and Protex go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, the rest of the Hyperclan's plan quickly falls apart. The Martian Manhunter finally reveals himself. He has been masquerading as Armek ever since the League were first captured. The rest of the League revive and blast their way through the top of the tower onto the surface. Flash sets up a ring of candles to contain Zoom, allowing Green Lantern the chance to knock him out with a ring-generated 16-ton weight. Zoom tries to take out Aquaman, mistakenly believing that he will be easy prey. Aquaman uses his telepathy to affect Zoom's basal ganglia to give him a seizure, ultimately incapacitating him. Wonder Woman and Primade take to the sky. Locked together in combat, Wonder Woman ensnares her in the lasso of truth, forcing Primade to assume her true Martian shape. She then power dives back to the surface and knocks a mortal out. Superman continues fighting against Protex. Superman drills deep beneath the earth with Protex, then lays him out with a good old-fashioned haymaker. While all of this is going on, Batman manages to capture a mortal and Zenturian. Although they have defeated the Hyper-Clan, they still have a Martian invasion to deal with. From Zonzor, Superman broadcasts a global message to the citizens of Earth. The people of Earth heed Superman's inspired message of courage and band together to repel the Martian invaders with the one element available to just about anyone, fire. With the threat of alien invasion alleviated, the Martian Manhunter uses his powers to lobotomize the Hyper-Clan. Forged with new identities and no knowledge of their Martian heritage, they were sent out into the world to join the human race. <laughs>